Oh, man. All right, give it a few more minutes here. We'll see if we can get some people, some folks back over for part three. Super frustrating. Pop goes the weasel. Yep. I know when it happens on my end, it like goes out just for a, a little bit, but it comes right back, but it's not able to reconnect to the stream. So super frustrating. It's time to upgrade the router. And while I'm at it, I'll probably upgrade the modem. Why not? Right. Get something more powerful. I'm out here in the garage, so I'm must be a Wi-Fi thing through the wall. It's just cutting out. Anyway, I apologize, apologies to everybody. Really sorry. We'll keep forging ahead here. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes until everybody comes back <laughs> again. And hopefully it does not happen again. Please. I'm knocking on wood. Knocking on a wood desk. <laughs> Make JT pay for it. <laughs> That's right. Three's the charm. All right. Hey, optimism. That's what I like. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming back over again, everybody. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, this interesting little exercise, uh, number four. Okay, three times a charm. Look at that. Two comments that one for like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. All right, I'm gonna forge ahead here, go up to exercise four. All right, and this one's called A major arpeggio trill exercise. So, what is a trill? And a trill is essentially just a really fast hammer on pull off. Okay, so if you really do one pick, you can see the first one that I have in the tab is on the fifth fret of the low string and just going to the sixth fret. And in this case, I'm just going hammer on, pull off, hammer on, pull off, or just hammer on, pull off, hammer on, like that. All right, Glenn, right on. Peter, yeah. I'm having some dial-up-esque problems. So I apologize to everybody. Thanks for sticking with me, okay? Exercise four, fifth fret of the low string, just doing a, a single fret up. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Daniel, you're going to like this exercise. So we're going up an A major arpeggio, okay? And this is sort of like a sequence, actually. So what I'm doing is I'm outlining. Which is going up the strings. Uh, of all the notes that make up A major. So we're starting on A. Goes to the major third. Yes, sorry, Glenn, might be. Major third, fifth, root. Major third, fifth, root. Major third. And then I'm going to come down in a different position. Major third, root, fifth, major third, root, fifth, major third, and back down where I started. But the sequence I'm doing is to go chromatically, like one fret up, and do like a hammer on, pull off, hammer on. So I'm going to go like this. It sounds a little more impressive. That kind of thing, right? So pretty cool exercise. Oh no, did it did it flicker again? Am I back? Am I back? It's telling me it's not unstable. Oh my god, gosh, <laughs> almost. Man, we got a ways to go. Come on. 
Come on, router. We got to get get through this. <laughs> Let me play it again. If you play it a little bit faster. That kind of idea. Okay. So really fun, but really, really cool. You can practice, uh, you know, just getting familiar with hammer-ons and pull-offs, right? So there you go, exercise four. You're going to learn A major arpeggio in two positions, go up one position, slide up, come down the other position. And also get a chance to work on some trills. And if you get a little speed on it, kind of sounds like a cool little lick, right? A little Randy Rhodes-ish for you metal folk out there. Um, questions before we get disconnected again. <laughs> Please don't make it a foregone conclusion that we're going to get connected, disconnected. I hope we're not. Uh, is there any way we can keep your Boston lessons on GT a bit longer past the 31st? Yeah. So unfortunately for those of you who don't know, there's a handful. It's actually quite a long list of songs, tutorials on guitar tricks that they were unable to extend the licenses with the publishing companies on. Lawyers negotiate these things and it's a really difficult process. And unfortunately just, there was a long list of songs that have to come off the site. And it's looking like in the next five days, right? Sour Steven, I did double the trill. I was just showing showing what you can kind of do with that idea, okay? Um, not strictly staying to the tabs there. But to get back to the Boston songs, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's out of my hands. It's lawyers. It's publishing companies. Unfortunately, some of the content is going to have to uh, go away. And it's it's a total drag, and we're we're really disappointed about it. But luckily, we <laughs> we still have a pretty sizable uh, song library, and we do have new songs coming. Okay, I want to stress that that's going to continue. We are going to keep filming new songs. Okay, um, so unfortunately, the Boston thing it's really too bad. But if the who's going away. Prince is going away. It's really, you know, we've got a bunch of heavy hitters that are going to be leaving the site. So unfortunately, out of my hands, man. I wish we could keep it. We can't. Okay. H have I ever listened to black metal songs before? Um, good question. I was just watching a documentary. Well, I, I read the Lord, Lord of Chaos, right? The original, were they the original black metal Scandinavian bands. Uh, I read the book and then I saw there was a fictionalized movie that was pretty good. And there was also a documentary that I watched. And that is sort of my extent of sort of black metal. <laughs> I've never really gotten any deeper into that. Um, so I'm a little more like, uh, you know, New wave of British heavy metal, 70s hard rock metal, 80s hard rock metal, that kind of stuff is is my wheelhouse. So, uh, uh, Sour Steven, do they have a list posted on, on Guitar Tricks? They do. You have to go to the forum section. And I think there's a sticky somewhere on one of the general discussion forums where the CEO of Guitar Tricks has made a post and listed all the songs that are going away. So yes, they do. Sour Steven, it's up there. Okay. Uh, Audible headache. I have a short scale Epiphone acoustic. What's a good action height? <laughs> Asking the wrong guy. As far as that goes, uh, you might be able to Google a Gibson owner's manual for that kind of thing. Usually the manufacturer will have like an owner's manual that gives you that info specific to the guitar models. Um, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I don't go that deep. Man, I just kind of lower the saddles or do whatever, try to get it low where it's not buzzing, and that's where I keep it. What's my favorite band? Oh, Mr. Daniel, I've got too many, too many, okay? Uh, I love uh, tons of music. You know, I'm a, I'm a rock guy, a rock metal guy, so I lean towards that, but I have 
uh, tons. Any way you can play an Eddie Van Halen riff? Well, I would actually, if I had to answer it, I would say uh, Van Halen is probably the biggest. And I can play lots of Eddie Van Halen riffs, three. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll play some towards the end when I play us out of this session. Uh, you know what, willing, if we... Uh, we do not uh, disconnect again, so uh, I will. Masarthum's Spire. Wow, never heard of them. I'm sure it's it's uh, great stuff, Mr. Daniel. All right, so let's continue on. Uh, switching it up now to an R and B rhythm exercise in the key of B. This is exercise five on the tabs, and this uh, this particular one features. Some uh, triads up top on the top three strings, uh, major chord triads. And we're in the key of B, so we're, we're sort of centered around this shape right here. So I'm barring down on the seventh fret of the B and high E string, and I've got the eighth fret of the G string. Okay. Misarthum is a cosmic black metal band, inspires the song name. I'm going to have to check that out. Thanks for the name check there. That sounds cool. All right, so I've got a little slide into that lower note first. All right, MKA Mel, thank you for joining us here. <laughs> it's been a wild night of technical difficulties. Once again, I apologize, everybody. So I'm going to slide into the eighth fret of the G string and let that ring out. And then I'm going to hit the whole triad. And there's a little dot on top of the notes on the staff. And what that means is that you have to cut it off quickly because it's a staccato. It's meant to be a staccato chord stab. Okay. So that's the first part of it. And then we're going same shape down two frets to A major and then back up to B major. So, okay. Now notice that there's a couple of rests in the middle of that. So one, two, and three, and four. Okay. One, two, and three, and four. Okay. And a three, fourth beat. And then again, a rest. So you're cutting that off, okay? That's the rhythm that we're going for. And we're just going to sort of change up some of the chord shapes. So that first bar, you're going from the B to the A, B major to A major, those triad shapes. Second bar. Going up to this shape. Okay, this is the ninth fret of the G, ninth fret of the B, seventh fret of the high string. That's the upper part of an E chord. Okay, so that's E major. That's an E major triad, which would be the four chord in the key of B. Okay, so you're going to the four, back to one, which is B. Okay. Third bar, back to, same as the first bar. Fourth bar. Only difference. Now we're going to this chord. This is an F sharp. F sharp major triad that's in the shape of the D chord, just up in the sixth position. Okay. Sixth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B, sixth fret of the high string. And then going back to the B. F sharp, this F sharp major chord is the five chord in the key of B. So we're doing a quick move to the five and then back to the one. Play the whole thing together, it looks like this. Okay. Great example of just playing staccato chord stab, right? You wanna cut that off as quickly as possible so I find, Right after I strum the chord, I sort of lift my fingers off the chord, but not off the strings so that they stay muted, right? And then uh, usually I'll just follow up with the karate chop over the strings just to kind of double mute everything. So this is good to know where to come in and where you can't, all right? And go as slow as you need to go. 
And also just take note of, you know, don't just, mem you know, yes, it's a one, four, five, pretty much, right? MKA melt, you're correct. What I just was going to say is try to connect that to the chord shapes, okay? And there's a number of ways to think of the chords, right? I can think of this as one, four, five, one in the key of B, okay? I can also think of it as B major, E, e major, F sharp major, B. So there's a lot of different ways to think of these chords, and I encourage you to sort of take just a beat and just try to internalize it, try to connect everything that, you know, your fingers are playing. You can look at the tab and play some stuff, but just be intentional about, okay, that's B, that's E. And you could even go further. You can go like, oh, well, this triad shape for B, right, is just the upper part of a B major bar chord seventh position, right? Like those are the top three notes. Okay, so take it a step further, connect it to things that you already know, right? When I go to this one, the E shape, okay? You've, you're learning a triad shape for a major chord that looks different than this one, right? And then also go a little bit further and go, oh yeah, that's just the upper part of this chord shape, right? The bar chord with the root on the fifth string. Same thing here with the F-sharp chord. It's a D chord, right? Okay? So just try and make some connections. Don't just, you know, put your fingers on the right frets and do that. That's all important too. But if you make a few of those connections, it's in there. And you could start to use this stuff a little bit quicker, right? Cool, cool. All right. So uh, that takes us to the exercise six, which is the uh, pedaling exercise. I don't think I've done any of these on, on the workouts yet. So this is kind of cool. Did I say E or C? Uh, I'm talking about uh, the exercise that's in the PDF. Oh, I guess it's going to be on the other one. I apologize. Uh, we had a handout for this on the previous uh uh, live stream, but this is part three, unfortunately. Yeah, so we're talking about the key of B, B as in uh, bumblebee, okay? All right, so on to the next exercise, uh, which is exercise six, which is a uh, pedal ex exercise. And so this involves some picking with string skipping and also staying anchored to what is called a, a pedal note or a pedal tone. And so I'm using... Uh, a minor, once again, A natural minor, sort of in this power chord shape position with the root on the seventh fret of the D string. And you've also got the ninth and tenth fret of the G and B, just as far as the chord shape, really, but you're playing sort of a scale within that area of the fretboard. And it starts with the high note, uh, an octave up, tenth fret of the B string. Okay. So you go 10 and then go to the seventh fret of the D string, 10 on the B, seventh fret of the D string. Then it's the eighth fret of the B string. And every time you're going back to this root note, which is the seventh fret of the D string. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to back up a little bit, because I'm seeing Daryl's question, which is really good, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I think I was talking about the F-sharp major triad that I was using in the previous example was a D shape, as in Daryl. D is in Daryl right here, okay? Because if you imagine the, D, the open D, and if you just move it up and play those three notes... That is a major triad shape, okay? And in this case, the root is in the middle, right? It's the, it's, in this case, it's the seventh fret of the B string. That's an F sharp note. So this is an F sharp major triad. And so I think I was saying it was a D shape, okay? Just to clarify that, hopefully that's, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> it's just the second inversion. Correct, it is the second inversion. When the fifth is the lowest note, it's called the second inversion major triad. Yes, correct. Okay. In the case of the B chord, since we're on this train of thought, this particular B, 
B triad in seventh position. The lowest note is the major third in the chord. What is that? Which particular? <laughs> Which particular inversion is this B? Right on, Sour Steven. Note, the low note is the major third in a B chord. Okay? Yes, first inversion. It's a first inversion. Correct. First inversion. Okay? And then this one for, that we use for the E chord, ninth fret of the G, ninth fret of the B, seventh fret of the high string. The lowest note in this particular triad shape is the root. It's E. So it, it's not an inversion. It's just a straight major triad because you spell it root, third, fifth. Okay? So we don't need to get super caught up into the naming of these, you know, first inversion, second inversion. All good. Just know that there are three different shapes that you have on each string set to make a, a triad shape. Okay? And that particular exercise went through all three of them, right? For the B chord, we had this first inversion. For the E chord, we had the straight non-inversion version. <laughs> bad, bad naming. And then the second inversion was the F sharp, okay? All right. Back to the pedaling exercise, okay? That's what we're going for there. So again, another challenging picking exercise could be a cool uh, lead you to a cool lick, lead you to a cool riff, something like that. We're just using notes from A minor and just pedaling against the root. Great up, they sound really good when you use palm muting with it. And so I included 6B, which is, uh, this one was, the first one is based off of A minor. Uh, the next one is based off E minor. We just move it down a string set, and the shapes change, change just a little bit because we're getting off that B string, right? So. Okay, so that's all that second exercise is there, is just... Uh, just playing it on a different string set okay but of course you can use this with any scale use it with any collection of notes come up with some cool stuff uh but it's a fun one to practice because you're you're basically doing like a down up picking and changing strings basically each time so a little more of a challenge there Cool, cool. All right. Final exercise in the handout. And for those of you have, that have joined us in this part three uh, video, the first video that actually had like a, an actual proper thumbnail in it, the part one, there is a link. There is a link for uh, a download of the PDF with the tabs in this one. So you're going to have to go back to the Guitar Tricks channel and look for the first video in the series of three, and it'll be in the description. So uh, thank you for your patience. Yes. Mr. Daniel, it occurs to me that I forgot to do that exercise, uh, one of those exercises with the uh, tremolo picking, because <laughs> you brought it up again. I'm gonna go back a little bit before I go into the final exercise. <laughs> I need to practice it a little bit, but you could, in fact, do, uh, you know, that sequencing exercise that I had earlier. And the tremolo picking is just down up picking as fast as you can go. Uh, 
that was a little bit sloppy. I don't often practice my, my tremolo picking, so uh, I got to go back to the woodshed for that one to clean it up a little bit. But that's the idea. You can do so many of these picking exercises, and you can practice tremolo picking with all that movement with the left hand, right? Doesn't always have to be a single pick. It can be a series of tremolo picks. Okay. So thanks for bringing that up again. <laughs> that's okay. I think he's telling me to stop. So that, that's okay. Maybe next time. <laughs> All right, Mr. Daniel. Cool. All right, final exercise, exercise seven in the handout is uh, key of D arpeggio shapes. And it's a little bit of an exercise just going through all of the possible chord arpeggios in the key of D. And we start off with fifth pulling off to the second fret on the high string and landing on the third fret of the B. And what this shape is doing, okay, we're going to go up the fretboard and we're going to change the root note by going up the D major scale. Okay, so you see that that's the root. That's the D note, right? And the notes that I'm doing are the fifth, the third, and the root, right? So this particular, this first arpeggio spells out a D major arpeggio, right? Root, major third, fifth. Okay? Now, if you move the root notes on the B string up in a sequence like uh, the D major scale, and in relation to this next note, you would know that in the key of D, the two chord, which is an E chord, is a minor chord. So the shape changes a little bit. Now we have root, minor third, fifth. So now you're pulling off seven to three on the high string, fifth fret on the B string. So, so far we've got, okay. The next one is F sharp. 7th fret of the B string, and we've got the same shape. We're going 9, pulling off to 5, and landing on 7 in the B. So that's another minor arpeggio shape. So we've got... Okay. Next, we've got the G note, 8th fret of the B string. That goes back to a major arpeggio shape. 10 to 7 on the high string to 8 on the B. Same thing with the A, 2 frets up on the 10th fret. Same shape, 12 to 9 on the high string, 10 on the B. Okay, so here we go. Right? Next one is B. That's the relative minor note in the key of D. So that chord is a minor. Yeah, a little bit of a finger stretcher, but well worth your time, right? Okay, 14 pulling off to 10, back to 12 on the B. All right, next one is a C-sharp note. That's the seventh in the D major scale. Now the seven chord in a major key is a diminished chord. It's a diminished triad, okay? So it's actually a flat five, flat three root. So that's the only different shape out of all of these is 15 pulling off to 12, going to 14. And then we end off back on the D note. Okay, so when you put it all together, okay? All we're doing is spelling out every of the, all of the chords within any key, okay? And the way that you arrive at those chords, you can think about it, you're, you're like, going to each note in the D major scale, right? This is how we get chords in any key, okay? And from that note, so if we start with D, what we do is we harmonize from the starting note that's in the scale. So I'm starting on the root, the D note, okay? And I wanna go to a third and a fifth. So if you follow the scale pattern up, 
you get those notes and that's how you make the chords. Okay. This is a chord, Daryl, this is called a chord arpeggio. Okay. I'm playing single notes, the actual notes that make up the chord. Okay. So I can either play a D major chord together like that. When I use the arpeggio, I'm playing each note distinctly. That makes up the chord. All right. So when we harmonize, the next one we go to is E. And we go up the scale to the third and the fifth. We go up to the D major scale. Happy Friday. What's up, Pierre? Excellent. And this is how we end up with a chord set that works in a major key. Okay, the one, four, and five chords are major, the two, three, and six chords are minor, and the seven chord is diminished. Okay, <laughs> uh, stretcher, the add nine, not six. The add nine is a stretcher. <laughs> Which one's that? This one, probably, nine fret. Now, if these are too much of a stretch for, for everybody, then start up the neck a little bit. Like transpose this whole exercise, instead of starting on the D note down the neck, maybe pick the A note and go up the neck that way, or probably the G note, eighth fret of the B. And that way, it's not as much of a stretch the further up the fretboard you are, if that makes sense. Okay? All right, Miles had a question. What's the hardest triad? Uh, I don't know about that. I, it might be, uh, <laughs> okay, but can you play Wonderwall? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Got to have the capo on the second fret, I think. <laughs> uh, good question. And there's something to be said for, uh, we're doing a guitar workout tonight, so come on. It's going to be finger exercises, all sorts of stuff, okay? <laughs> We're not playing songs right now. Although I had a request for some EVH, so uh, I'll probably play some Van Halen riffs here to end us out. Uh, a major add nine chord on the four, five, six, seven frets. A major add nine. What am I, what am I thinking of? A major add nine. <laughs> uh, thank you, Troy. You are too kind, seriously. A major add A major A major add nine on the four. Uh, it's not the add nine. But. Man, I can't get. Yeah, you know, I'm just might be frazzled or something. I can't think of the A major add nine. What would the A major add nine be? Let's see. How can I do it? Oh, man. <laughs> it's a stretcher for sure. Yeah, as far as the hardest triad, I don't know. There, uh, you know, maybe probably the uh, major triad on the low strings might be a little bit of a stretcher depending on where you're doing it. Right? Like A major here. Fifth fret of the low string, fourth fret of the A string, second fret of the D string. That can be a bit of a tough, tough grab. That, that kind of. Andy Summers chords. That are those, these these ones. <laughs> All right. These are the tough ones right here. <laughs> uh,
and <laughs> I got to practice that. And you feel that immediately. So there you go. <laughs> Pretty crazy. All right. We want some uh, Van Halen to end it off here tonight. Another black metal riff. <laughs> I love it, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> I might need a metronome. You are correct. I need to get at it. I need to woodshed. This has been a little bit of an embarrassment tonight with my uh, not-so-great playing. <laughs> All right. So uh, I was going to throw on the phaser just to make it. What can I play here? Okay, so Eddie had a crazy swing. So I don't know how close I get to the swing, but this is a really fun riff to play. Anyway, I could be playing some Van Halen all night, probably badly, but uh, I could be on here all night doing that. But uh, I guess. This is as good a spot to uh, say thanks for hanging in there. I really appreciate it. We ended up with more people on this part three than we uh, had when we had the technical difficulty. So I appreciate everybody joining on and sticking with it. Okay. And for those of you, I just reiterate that you, if you didn't get the PDF handout, it's available two videos back in the description. There's a download. Okay. <laughs> Right on, Pierre. I appreciate that. Yeah, we do We do this every Friday, same time. And uh, knock, knock, knock. We're going to have a strong connection next week, okay? Thank you, Charlie Boy, D, th or Dre. Thanks so much for all the, uh, everybody, all the participation, all the comments really uh, makes the hour go quick so much. Thank you, Jim. Hope things all are, are uh, hope things are all well up in Ontario. What's next week? Good question. What's next week? We'll figure it out. I do not have anything in mind. <laughs> yes, Peter. Uh, uh, Dave is in our, our thoughts right now. We're going to send some positive thoughts. And if prayers are your thing, we're sending prayers. Uh, you know, Dave had a little bit of a medical issue yesterday on the Facebook Live. It was really uh, horrible timing for that. Just a horrible situation, but he is recovering and he will be back in action soon. We hope he's doing well today. He is doing a lot better today. So thanks for that, Peter. Really appreciate it. All right, everybody. It was absolutely awful. Yes, I was when, when I heard about that and, uh, you know, was shaking. It was just not a good scene. So anyway, all the best to Dave. And like I said, we've I heard earlier today that he's doing a lot better today. Okay. Excellent. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Uh, for those of you dropping in for the first time tonight, I invite you every Friday, same time. And uh, hopefully we'll have a solid stream next week. That's what I'm shooting for. So uh, take care, everybody. And we'll see you soon. End stream. See ya. <laughs>